Hello everybody. We are on our way to Arizona to play the memorial. We have two more hours still. I think it was like a five hour drive. And I didn't know there was a time switch between Vegas and Arizona. There's an hour switch? Interesting. Let's get back on the road. We got this really nice Airbnb. We are staying with our friends Kat and Cody. And Chris is eating a peanut butter and honey sandwich. That's pretty good. Look at this cute living room. The kitchen, I love these countertops. They're sparkly. Got a nice little bathroom. And here's our bedroom. How cute is that? I love it. All right, we're here at Vista. Gonna do a nice little practice round with Kat and Cody. And I guess Chris can play too. <laughs> okay, thanks. <laughs> First throw over the water. Hole 13 of the tournament. That was so safe. Just don't skip onto the sidewalk. Safe. Safe. <laughs> The weather here is way better than Vegas. It's like 65 and sunny. It's a little bit windy today, but it feels so good to just play without 20 layers of clothing. <laughs> down. That's too high. There it is. <laughs> so we've played this course twice now. We played Fountain Hills this morning. That's a rough course. <laughs> but we threw a lot of discs into the water, but we did retrieve most of them. We lost two. Maybe we'll get them back. Oh yeah. So good. That's nice. Oh, perfect. Eagle, opportunity. Deep. What do you have to say for yourself? Thank you, Tailwind. <laughs> we got an eagle bid here. Can he do it? Oh, it stayed. Good job. Impressive. Why didn't you sign up for this tournament? I want to caddy. <laughs> Yeah, that looked good. What's up with all these ducks? Look at them. It's a duck party. So we're finishing up here at Vista, and I think this is the better of the two courses because Fountain Hills is just so terrifying. Every shot. Kat threw her favorite driver into the water, so we're gonna go swimming. Well, I'm not, she is. Oh. oh my god, I don't know if it can go in. <laughs> it's gonna be cold. Famous last words, you know? <laughs> love you mom, love you dad. <laughs> I'm gonna die. Oh. 
Oh my god, it's so cold. <laughs> Hi! We're going to get some food. And it's really crappy out. Adobada. You can barely see it, so dark. But it looks delicious. <laughs> Hello everybody and welcome to the Memorial Championships in Arizona? Yeah. <laughs> it is a little cold today, but we are here at Fountain Hills. We start on the hard course. Okay. I'm a little bit nervous. I don't want to lose any discs, but I'm not going to because I'm not going OB. <laughs> <laughs> so round one, Fountain Hills. I was very nervous because we only got one practice round on this course. And there's just so much water, so it's it makes for a very nervy round. But we had a, a great card. I got to play with Kat, the other lady from Canada that we traveled with. And the other ladies were just so fun. It was probably the best day. <laughs> I decided that I was just going to play it pretty safe, be aggressive when I can, when there's not too much water around. But I was going to lay up most of my putts that I was near water. <laughs> That was just what I was gonna do. I didn't wanna do anything too crazy and take a big number when I didn't have to. So starting off, my drives were timid. You can probably see that I am pulling to the right a lot just to avoid the water on the left. <laughs> um, this hole, I really wanted to get. It's a par five and it's pretty gettable, but I just was being too scared with my approach shots and I kept leaving it short, so. I just taken the par for this hole and nothing wrong with that. And then this hole is weird because it's only like 294 feet, but for some reason I could not get my fairway there. I know I wasn't throwing like really hard. Um, and I also didn't want to throw one of my flippier like drivers because the OB is tight to the right. And if you skip, you can definitely go OB left. So that was just a weird hole and <laughs> I couldn't reach it. And then this is 250 feet and everything just seems to be playing further than it's it was. I don't know why, but I threw a fairway there and I was still short, so I was really confused about that. Uh, this hole is definitely just a par hole. It is 463 feet downhill, but it's basically unreachable unless you are putting like a big move on it. But this upshot, terrifying. I thought that was definitely OB long and it was short so it's it's a really touchy upshot and it, it's very deceiving. Now this hole is 233 feet but it is blocked by this big tree. You can either go over or you can try to do the sidearm or you can try and go through the tree which I just decided to do a sidearm and I pulled it a little bit too left but I was Closer. pretty happy with the outcome. I will take a par on this hole. Hole 7 is 210 feet and I'm just throwing my P model US here. It's my water putter so if I lose it I'm not going to be too sad. And again it just plays further than what it looks and I was holding on for dear life. I was just on the rocks. So I was really happy and I decided I got a good break so let's run the putt and I made it. So that was a nice birdie. Hole 8 is a par 4. This one is definitely gettable, but also tricky at the same time. So you want to land. The best place is to be on top of that hill so you can actually see the basket. So I still can't really see the basket, but I have a wide open run at it. And I'm throwing pretty good, so I take my M4, throw it. I think it's perfect. And apparently it was short. And I was just so confused. I don't know how short it was, but I never got that disc back. And I'm, I'm really upset because it was like the most beautiful M4 <laughs> and it felt so good. So I'll have to replace it. So I ended up taking a, a bogey on that hole. Yes. So then this hole is 275 feet, very scary. And I just was throwing my F model S and it landed on the island. And I pitched up and took my par. This hole is 
more difficult than it looks. It's, it says it's only 310 feet, but it plays way longer. It's uphill, and it is a big turnover line. And I just pitched up, and I took my car. Hole 11 is 368 feet. This one is a smash to get, but I know that I can get a putt for it. I just have to get my D3 on the perfect angle. And I wish that I got a little bit more turn out of that, but I, I have an open look, but it is pretty hard to run at it because of those trees. I feel like the, the right tree is just perfectly in the way of where you want your putter to fade. So I took a par there. And this is definitely a birdie hole. 290 feet downhill. I'm throwing my MX3, but I just yank it a little bit too far to the right, and I don't get the skip <laughs> that I need to get down the hill. So I'm looking at this for my birdie. Get it. And out of my hand, I thought it was in. I was like, oh, that's so good. And then it was just a little bit short, but it was a good run. So this hole 10, 310 feet, another birdie hole. I'm throwing my D3. And I just early release it, and it gets a big old skip past the basket in circle two. And I told myself I was going to be aggressive on the holes without water. So I was like, you know what? Elevated basket. Let's just go for it. And it paid off. Another bomber hole that I didn't really plan on getting. But if it happened, I would be really happy about it. And I got a good drive. I wish it just hit the top of the hill because I feel like it would have got a better skip. But I'm in circle two, giving it a good run. And I just miss it. But I'm in for my par. Pole 15, 426 feet. It rained a lot the night before, so this was totally flooded. Um, so I was, I usually go straight up the middle, but I went over it this time. So sacrificed a little bit of distance, but we just have the open, easy shot. And I left it short, giving me a putt, but I was not worried about this because my putting has been so good. And since I uh, thought that I was just going to go in, I missed it because I wasn't thinking. <laughs> but that's okay. Hole 16, 327 feet. There is a mando that you need to go right of, and I just threw my D2 too soft, didn't get it to flip up. So I'm looking at a long bid for birdie. Miss it, but I'm in for my par. Hole 17, 468 feet. This one is not a birdie hole, really, for me at least. You really have to throw like a good drive to get a circle two look. Ooh. I threw my lightweight D2, got some really good distance, and I was like, well, there's no water, so gotta run it. <laughs> oh my gosh. Oh. And you know what? Challenge <laughs> if that tree wasn't like there, I think it would have went in. <laughs> but it's a par, and that was a fun hole. Hole 18. It's kind of a scary hole, but also it's, it's easy to par just because I feel like you can't reach it, so you're just kind of breaking the hole in two. So I got a good drive out there, and I'm just throwing my putter, pitching up. And this is also kind of a scary pitch up, because if you if you get it too high and it starts fading, it's very easy to go in the water, but we are in for the par. So end of the first round at Fountain Hills. I am pretty happy with how I played. I only lost one disc in the water. <laughs> I threw my beautiful M4. I, I thought it was a really good shot, but everything just seems to be a little bit further than it is, that than it looks. So that went straight into the water and I'm a little sad about it, but I feel like I will get that back, hopefully. <laughs> Um, but other than that, I was putting really well. I only lost focus for one putt, which I'm kind of annoyed at because that cost me my even round that I was aiming for. Overall, I'm feeling pretty confident with like my disc selection and the accuracy that I was throwing today. So I'm hoping tomorrow that I could actually go negative on the course because there are quite a bit of birdieable holes. So. That would be really nice. <laughs> but really, I'm just looking to stay clean again. I don't want to lose any more discs. I've lost two so far since we've been here in Arizona. So I don't want to really lose any more discs, but we're going to still be aggressive. Still gonna lay up the putts though that are looking straight towards the water. <laughs> 
So I have a little bit of a later tea time tomorrow and it looks like we're gonna have beautiful weather again. And I'm just excited to play Fountain Hills again. It's a really beautiful chorus. It is challenging, but still scorable. So it's really fun to play. Round two out here at Fountain Hills. I wanna shoot negative. <laughs> I'm just trying to stay out of the water. I lost one disc yesterday, hoping to get it back, but I'm gonna try and stay out of the water, but still be aggressive. So let's see how it goes. Okay, round two at Fountain Hills. I really wanted to be more aggressive and get some of the birdies that I knew I missed out on yesterday, like hole two, three, and four. I really wanted to get those, but I was feeling so nervous today. I don't know what it is about second rounds. At most of my tournaments, I just, I get in my head and ugh, it's just really frustrating, but I, I threw a bad tee shot, a very bad up shot, and then I had to take a, a bogey on the first hole. So here, hole two, I'm trying to get the birdie here because I know I can, and I throw a decent tee shot. I didn't get as much distance as I wanted. And then here, as you can see, I just pull it to the right again. I'm just so worried about throwing my disc into the water. But it's inbounds, and I have like 210 feet to the basket, throw my P-Model US, and I just, I don't give it enough power or hyzer, so I'm laying up for my par again, which I was upset with because I really wanted to birdie that hole. And then this hole again, it's 294 feet, but for some reason it plays so far. I tried to throw that harder today, and we had a headwind, so I, I couldn't throw the disc that I wanted. I just hyzered out, and I'm way outside the circle, so now I'm just giving it a, a bid, but I'm taking my par. Really wanted to get those holes. Same with this one, 250 feet, I missed the island, I told myself I was not going to miss it today. Luckily, I'm in bounds, and I made the island, and I'm looking at this birdie, and I just pull it a little right, but I got the par, so... One better than yesterday. <laughs> well, five, 463 feet. Not very birdieable, but I threw a pretty good tee shot. I was very happy with that. I was trying to get more distance than yesterday so the upshot could be easier. And then I just messed up my upshot and left it so short. So now I just have to pitch up and take my bogey. Oh, I'm so upset with myself. Now this hole. 233 feet. I was trying to correct because I went two left the day before and it just raises up, hits that tree. And I'm short, so I'm pitching up with my A5. And I thought this was perfect, maybe a little bit short. But then the girls looked at me and they were like, Ugh. it rolled all the way down the hill. OB. So I'm trying to run this. I miss it. And I'm tapping in for my double bogey. Ugh, disgusting. <laughs> Hole seven, we have a pretty strong headwind. It was much windier today than it was yesterday. So I threw my P-Model US and it just flips over, but it is safe and I'm pitching up to take my par. Hole eight, 570 feet. I'm throwing my D2 because of the headwind. So I don't get as much distance as I want, but I'm still in a pretty good spot. But it was just too windy, and I didn't want to risk going for the island and losing another disc and taking a bogey. So I decided to play it safe and go around the tree. And now I have a pretty stiff headwind throwing my putter to the basket. This was such a difficult shot to commit to throwing and not leaving it short because I just love doing that. And so I actually went past the basket, but I was in bounds and I got my par. So I improved from the day before. <laughs> then this hole I was trying to get to, and it was a good shot, but still just out of reach. That is a very scary putt. The water is right behind the basket, so just laying up and taking a par. This hole I really wanted to get. I knew I could get. I left it low the day before, so I gave it some good height, good turn. And I got just outside of the circle, and I was licking my chops for this one. I wanted it so bad, but I just, uh, I that putt made me really upset. <laughs> so that sucks, but I took a par. 
368 feet. I got a way better angle on my disc this time, and I got just outside circle one, and I really wanted to make this putt again, because I was improving my drives. I just needed to make the putt, but <laughs> again, that tree, ah, taking my par. Hole 12, 290, definitely a birdie hole. I corrected and I hit the line that I wanted, but I didn't put enough juice on it, so I am outside the circle again. And I'm looking at a step putt. Really want to make this. Need to get something going. And I miss. And I'm just getting more and more frustrated every hole. I'm just missing my putts. Throwing good drives, missing my putts. But I make that good comebacker to save my par. So I birdied this one in the last round, so I really wanted to birdie it again. And I did the same thing, and I'm trying to give this a good run. And I don't even get it basket height. <laughs> I think at this point I was just really flustered because I'm playing better, I'm throwing better drives, and I am not capitalizing on them, so I'm just feeling very frustrated. Then here again, I left it short, but not a bad drive, and I gave it a really good run, but it didn't go in. <laughs> so that's four birdies that I missed out on. That just sucks. As you can see, this hole really cleared up, and I kind of, I, I didn't really slip, but I just got no power, left a nose up, so I didn't get any distance. So now I have a longer up shot. And I do the same thing, I air it out, it's short, and I'm looking at this putt, but I got it in, <laughs> which I was happy about, so I saved my par. And this hole I really wanted to get as well, it's very straightforward, it's just a hyzer hole, it's 327 feet, it plays, I feel like it plays a little bit longer than that, but my D3 just flipped up too much and left me this long look at a 2. And now I'm just tapping in for my par. Hole 17, it's a pretty stiff right to left tailwind, so I'm throwing my lightweight D2 again. I didn't get as much distance as I did the day before, so now I'm just pitching up with my distortion. And I thought it was perfect, but it gets caught on like the clover and leaves me short, so I'm looking at this putt for my par. Oh, and I just squeak it in. But it's a par. Full 18, 400 feet. I know I can't birdie this one, so that sucked because I didn't get a birdie the whole time. I couldn't improve on my score. My bogeys were there to stay. So I was just trying to get out of this clean and take a par. And I left that a little high and short, which was scary. And now I'm looking at this pretty long putt. But it's in. And I finish with another par. Round three, we are at Vista Park, and I am super excited because I played really well practice rounds here. So I was just really ready to come play some good golf, make some big putts, and get some birdies. Unfortunately, Chris was not feeling well this round, so we didn't get to tape the whole round for you. I'm just going to go over a few shots and talk about my feelings and what I was going through. So I started off just throwing my drives, kind of weak and timid, not getting the angles right. I was leaving it a little bit nose up, but nothing too crazy. I was still getting my pars. I wasn't letting my drives get to me. Um, and since I've been putting so well, I wasn't really worried about my putting either. But slowly, I just was making silly mistakes. And the front nine, I ended up with a, in the positive. So I was plus one going into the back. And um, hole 10, I played perfectly. It's a 651 feet par 5. It's a little bit tricky with how the slopes are on the sides. I played it so good, I got up to bullseye and I just missed the putt for my birdie. And that's when it kind of just started going downhill. And I took a bogey on the next hole, then I bogeyed the next hole, and then I doubled to the next hole. So hole 13 is very hard. It's 405 feet par three and it is very difficult to get your par but I played it perfect I left my upshot a little bit short I had like a 15 footer 
for my par, and I putt, and it ramped off the basket and went OB. And I was just, like, so upset because I was missing these tiny little putts, and I knew that was just going to be it. I wasn't going to make the cut. But I was just trying to keep my head in the game. You never know what's going to happen. So the next hole I played so well. It was a par 5, 605 feet. And I threw a great drive. And then my next drive was kind of weak. But I still had like a really long look at an eagle. So I went for it. And it was a really good run. And it left me like... 11 feet (laughs) and I missed the putt for my birdie so I ended up parring that hole from eagle to par so that was really annoying hole 15 was a par 4 and I threw perfect every shot missed my really short putt for birdie that's just what the theme was of the day I did make the island on 17 which I was really happy about and I got the putt in so I took a birdie on that hole and 18 is also very difficult it you're throwing over the water and you have to make like an island and I got in the circle, missed my putt, but I took a three, which I was I was pretty happy with that. But I knew that my round was not good enough. It was a plus four. I wanted to go negative on this course. I know for sure that I could, but I just couldn't do it. It was it was a hard day, but we move on. We live and we learn. And maybe next year. <laughs> We're back home. So we have been home for a couple days now. I realized that I didn't go over any of my rounds with you. (laughs) We're just about to go play some disc golf after a couple days. And I got my new allotment. I'm really excited because I got a nice stack of fairways that I'm gonna try because I was lacking some fairways. So as you saw, I did not play as well as I wanted. The first day I was playing pretty well. I was hitting most of my lines. I was still kind of timid just because of all the water and I did not want to lose a disc. But I played pretty well and I was hitting most of my putts. I think I only missed one C1 putt, which I'm really happy about because I was struggling with those 15 footers in Las Vegas. So the first round I was pretty happy with. I shot a plus one on round one. It was a 920 rated round and that left me tied for eighth. And I was just trying to get through Fountain Hills without losing too many discs or making too many mistakes. I only threw one disc into the water at Fountain Hills, which I was happy about, but I'm sad because I lost it and it was never returned. It was my beautiful purple M4. I'm gonna miss you. So the second day at Fountain Hills, I was feeling really unconfident for some reason. I don't know why but I still was hitting most of my C1 putts and I think I only missed one for the day. And then I kept being like just outside the circle for my birdies and I would miss the putt and it was so frustrating because I was getting there for some long holes that I was not expecting and uh, it just sucks that I couldn't capitalize on those, but I played (laughs) clean-ish. I scored a plus four which was an 898 rated round, which I was not happy with, but the way that I played, I was getting there for birdies and just missing them. So it really sucked that it was an 898 rated round because I didn't feel like I played that bad, but I had a double bogey on six, that really annoying hole that you have to like throw over the tree. And I just, ugh, that was a really bad hole. And from then on, I just parred every single hole and couldn't get a birdie. So that's what that was. But we were moving on. I was really excited for Vista because I played really well during my practice rounds. And that's where I wanted to be really aggressive and get a lot of birdies. So (laughs) round three comes and I was a little bit nervous because I knew that I could make the cut pretty easily if I just played my game and didn't get into my head. So uh, I started off a little bit shaky. My drives weren't like super strong and I was kind of putting them nose up. I knew my drives were a little bit off and they weren't as strong and confident as they usually were, but I wasn't, I was really going to try and rely on my putting because it has been so good in the, the past couple days. So I was playing some of the holes really nice and clean. I would get up to like bullseye for my birdie putt and I would miss it. So that started on hole 10 and I played the hole perfectly, it's a par five, and I got right up to the bullseye and I missed a short tap and putt for my birdie. So 
That kind of got me frustrated. Just from there, I kind of spiraled out of control. Like my drives weren't terrible, but I could not make a putt. So there was multiple holes that I played perfectly, got up to basically bullseye, and I just would miss my putt. And that was really, really frustrating because I didn't know why I was missing my putt. It was, my putting has been so strong the past couple days, so it wasn't like a confidence thing, but I just... I was just missing them left and right. They were chaining out and I didn't know how to fix it. <laughs> I finished off okay. I made the island on hole 17 and I got that putt in. So that was a nice birdie. And then hole 18, you have to throw over the water and it's pretty tricky, but I got into circle one, ended up missing the putt, but I was just really upset with myself because I was planning to at least go like negative two on that course. And I ended up shooting a positive four, which was a 903 rated round. And I was just so upset with myself because I keep replaying the holes that I missed my short putts that could have easily put me into the cut line. And I, uh, it's just so frustrating because in that moment, I don't know how to correct these things that I'm having issues with. Like, how can I just be confident with my throw when my body doesn't let me throw the disc how I want? And how can I stop missing those seven footers when I know I can make them? I make them so easily, it's not even a second thought, but then once I'm there and I, I go to putt, I just miss. It's just really frustrating and it's something that I really have to figure out because it's ruining everything. <laughs> it really sucks when, you know, Chris and I put all this time and effort to go out to these events and I practice and I do everything that I need to do and then right when I'm there and I have to do something I can't do it and it's it's really it's just really upsetting and I I had a hard time <sighs> accepting that I missed those small putts and and I missed missed the cash line I was just it was really I was really upset but I told myself this year was going to be the change of mentality because last year I really struggled mentally and that was definitely one of my bigger downfalls because I would just I would hate myself after a bad round and this year is gonna be different I'm gonna make mistakes and I'm not gonna beat myself over beat myself up over those mistakes and hopefully that will help me throughout the year and it will let me not be scared to make mistakes and then maybe I can stop making them so often. <laughs> so overall, I came in 13th and I'm not happy with it, but we're moving on. And I think the next event that I'm playing is Sky Breeds Open in Kentucky. I think that's where it is. And then we're going to MCO in Tennessee. So that's going to be really exciting because I haven't played those courses yet. I'm really looking forward to it. So what I'm going to focus on is just putting, being happy, and finding a fairway disc yeah because that's what i'm missing in my in my lineup I'm feeling really good with my disc though so once i find that fairway everybody better watch out <laughs> okay so thank you all so much for watching and we will see you in the next one bye